Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the to the Play Legit podcast, the premier podcast for gaming and real talk. We are your host, Corey Elijah, and I'm here with my co-host. Hey, Jay, and we're going for episode 20. That's right. 20 episodes, 20 weeks so far of the Play Legit podcast. I want to give a special shout out to everybody that's been tuning into the show. We definitely appreciate you guys. Whether you watch us, you know, in the, the video format on YouTube of the Play Legit Network on YouTube, uh, whether you're listening to us on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, Google Podcasts, whatever it may be, we appreciate all of you guys tuning in. We're back with the 20th episode. We're going strong. And we got a great show for you guys tonight. I have to admit, we got some cool stuff to talk about. We're going to be getting into WWE Battlegrounds. We're going to get into our recognized portion of the show where we get into the play legit indie game spotlight uh we're gonna have a mission three hot seat where uh kj is gonna throw me in the hot seat and have some uh some some questions that i'm not prepared for to shoot at me uh in a rapid fire succession uh we're gonna get into a surprise from sega as well as the pricing of new games going on for the next generation. So it's going to be an awesome show. But before we get into all of that, I do want to just make sure you guys check out playlegit.net because that's the home, that's the hub. That's where you're going to find everything related to gaming and real talk. You're going to find the show there, of course. You're going to find original article, articles, reviews, even 8-bit trolls if you're trying to look for something funny. That's the spot where you're going to want to go. Playlegit.net. And of course, you're going to want to check us out on YouTube as well. The Play Legit Network on YouTube. You're going to find the show and a bunch of other great content that we have up there as well. There's tons of Play Legit originals as well as reviews and stuff. So please subscribe to that channel. Hit the little bell so you can get the notifications whenever we upload new content. And of course, also subscribe to us on iTunes as well as Spotify if you want to listen to our beautiful voices while you're at work and get all of the, the updates with with what's going on in gaming in real talk. Ah, so KJ, man, before we get into the show, man, how you how you feeling, man? How's the week going? Man, the week's going good. I, and I co-sign everything you just said. And it's just really cool that there's a lot of opportunities for people to jump in and just listen in when you're working. Uh, because of the job that I do, I very much appreciate podcasts and listen to, to them when I'm working. Uh, so the fact that that's available is very cool. And I'm doing well. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. It's been super hot where I am. I imagine it's hot where you are, too. It's just been a scorcher this week. Uh, but Rest. that's not that's not going to have a shy away from the juiciness of what's going on in the gaming community, bro. WWE Battlegrounds info has been released. Let's get on into this. Now, on an earlier episode of the podcast, we were talking about how 2K was going to take a break or was no longer going to be making the WWE 2K series. Now it's looking like they're just postponing that series for a year and coming out with bat a Battlegrounds version, which is more of like a cartoony, uh, fun version uh, for wrestling and taking a little break uh, on the on the main line. So what do you have for thoughts on this? Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll kind of dive into releases and release dates and all that stuff as well. I can tell you that, the, the Xbox 360, PS3 era, uh, there was a release called WWE All-Stars, and this, pretty much to a T, is an answer to that. Now, this is a little bit more, even more over the top. All-Stars was over the top in a big-time way, but this one is adding, like, powers and stuff. So I, I remember WWE Immortals on a mobile device that I think it's kind of like blending that, because in Immortals, it was, like, more superhero, superpower our base so it's like they're taking immortals and all-stars put it together uh me personally i think that all-stars is from that generation one of the best fighting games like hands down for any and anybody who played that i think would agree with me especially playing it online getting four people going and it was just very very impressive how all these crazy over top moves they would flow together so you could do really, really awesome combos, right? You juggle somebody in the air and then transition that punching combo into an air grapple. And then if you're playing with your buddy, you can have your buddy join in on the fun and, and then you can throw up the person and then your buddy can grab them. 
And I, I can't tell you, that's some of the smoothest combat I've ever experienced. And that's just real talk. I, I know what you're thinking. It's, it's a cartoony WWE All-Stars, but go back and play it. You'll know what I'm talking about. Will they be able to capture that magic and transfer that over to Battlegrounds? This is a, this is a brand new team doing this. Stuff. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a, a completely different team. It, on paper, I'm seeing shades of All-Stars. I would really, to me, I, I want to play this game. I would really just like an All Stars too, though, because that that was this is even more cartoony and more over the top than All Stars. So um, I I just I, I want to play it, but I just remember All Stars and how great it was. Mm. So it's looking like this game is coming out September 18th. Uh, there's a few game modes that's listed on the site here as well. So of course you're going to have your ex, uh, ex exhibition mode where you brawl with ease in exhibition matches at home or on the go anytime and anywhere in local and online multiplayer action for up to four players. So you're looking at um, maybe tag team matches, you know, or one-on-one -on -one matches. You can take it locally because uh, it's going to be on a Switch, PC, Xbox One, uh, and PS4. So me personally, I feel like this might be a great Switch pickup, uh, especially being able to, to pick up, take it on the go, play multiplayer, things like that. Now, you may want to throw, you know, might want to have it on the PS4, the Xbox, even PC, maybe, uh, if you're... Or uh, Stadia. Um, yeah, or, or Stadia, you know. Oh, yep, yeah, right at the end. They did they did sneak know. in Stadia right there at the end. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, for me personally, I feel like this would be great for, for Switch. You're going to have a campaign mode as well. There's the King of the Battleground. Uh, brawl with the best in the king of the battleground and online last man standing mode where four players start in the ring while four more wait outside to enter challenging you to the run uh to run the gauntlet and defeat them all so it's like a royal probably rumble. interests me the most mm, like an online royal rumble type thing that they have going on and of course the online mode with your exhibition matches and online tournaments and stuff like that so i mean like you said if on paper, it looks like it will be a good game, uh, and even based off of the trailer, it looks like it looks like it's going to be one of those fun games to play. Um, we'll see how we'll see how this goes. Is it one of the, did they just throw this together? Have they been working on this for a while? Is this part of the plan um, for them to kind of ease up on the whole two K two K series where they don't have to every year? put out a new uh, a new rendition of the game, especially with the amount of DLC and things that they came up with. Uh, I know you were speaking on that uh, before we came on. Do you want to touch touch on that a little bit? Uh, DLC? Yeah, just kind of how, like, everything, how they, the format of 2K21, how yeah. that may have been exhausted and maybe why they're switching over to this model. Sure, yeah, because the most recent WWE 2K games... They'd come out, of course, they, they were doing annual releases, but with that, they would have all this DLC with additional characters, and, and they're characters that you're like, years before would have just already been on the roster, or it's just characters, it's like, okay, I see them every week wrestling, why are they DLC? And then there's DLC for move packs and different things, and it came to a point where the way that they're releasing that content, you would think that it wasn't for an annual game. You would think that it would be for like a Samurai Showdown or or a Soul Calibur Five. But wait a minute, you're investing just about as much as you would in that or a Tekken 7, and it's for an annual game. So I am liking what I'm seeing with Battlegrounds as far as that's concerned. They just couldn't get around doing microtransactions. We know 2K, they just love that. They couldn't get around it. They couldn't, they couldn't do it. But what they did do here is there's going to be 70 characters at launch. And then they're saying that new characters after launch will be free. I don't know if all of them will be free because they're pretty slick with the verbiage. But mm -hmm. the fact that they're going to be releasing free characters post-launch is pretty cool. And that's showing me maybe that they're kind of turning a page, but maybe not because at the same time, they're still pushing those stupid coins. Mm, yeah i mean they do have they do have the golden bucks here uh and i mean if if the characters are free maybe they're using some of like the 2k 
money to kind of fund this so they can continue to do DLC and have people continue to purchase purchase the DLC packs for the 2K version until the next one comes out, but then they still have another game so people can't complain and be like, oh, well, you're just, you're just trying to make as much money as you can off of this one game. Well, we have this game here that starts at $40. It's starting at $39.99 for the standard edition, and we're giving you free characters as we update that game. We're just asking you to continue to buy all of the movesets, characters that you see wrestle every single week, but you have to purchase them in our 2K version. So, I mean, I mean, the, these companies have to do something, and this is actually going to kind of tie in with the last topic uh, of the sure. show. Um, but, I mean, it's standard edition. You're looking at $40 for the game. Um, and then the digital deluxe version, you're looking at 50 bucks, and that's going to give you 1,100 golden bucks, uh, digital deluxe bonus pack, uh, and an Edge totally awesome pre-order pack. Well, I guess you get the pre-order pack uh, with both of those. So, I mean, it's not bad. It's not a super expensive game, 50 bucks for the digital deluxe. So, I mean, it could be worse. They're trying to figure it out, I feel like. They're just trying to figure it out. I feel you. I'm a, I'm interested to play it. I uh, want to definitely. I saw in the background Yokozuna, so I think that that's cool that they're actually you know going back into more of the old school, you know, mm. grabbing some more legends to fill out that that roster. Uh, so I like who the confirmed wrestlers I saw so far. I was liking who I was seeing. Uh, again, like if it, it's like all stars, I'm just picking the best of the best. So mm. absolutely. Yeah, and they, they definitely need to take advantage of that old school roster because, I mean, honestly, in a game like this, that old school roster is the roster you really want to play with, you know? I mean, you, you want to have new school characters, but, I mean, if I can't, if I'm not using Macho Man Randy Savage, if I'm not using Mankind, Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? There's so many, Steve Austin, The Rock, there's so many legends uh, that they can bring in. Yokozuna, Doink the Clown, there's so much, there's so many characters and iconic, you know, figures from the entire history of the WWE that they can bring in this that we'd, that we'd like to see. Of course, you know, you see in the trailer, they got Undertaker, you know, so, I mean, I, I feel like they're going to do it justice. I hope there's 70 characters at launch, you said, so, I mean, they should have a good, a good amount of, uh, of throwbacks in there as well. So, I mean, I'm interested. We'll see how it goes. It's a cheap game as well. So, and it, we're right at that time where, you know, we're launching, uh, next gen is going to be launching soon. So a, a cheap title like this quick, a quick $40 pickup, you know, is going to be nice, especially around that time in the fall. So I'm with it. All right, man. So shifting gears, let's, let's get into the recognized portion of the show here okay we're gonna be shining a light on the play legit indie game spotlight and it is carrion uh, i hope i'm saying it right carrion i don't want to say carry on because it sounds like i'm talking about you know taking flight somewhere or something maybe it is carry on um but it is from phobia game studios uh it's an indie game and honestly i i know if this was it was announced i believe uh e3 2019 so last year's e3 i've somehow this kind of just flew by my radar so when kj sent this over to me i was like oh let me check this out uh so i pull up the gameplay footage from e3 2019 i watch all of that it was a 20 minute gameplay and then i started finding more videos of gameplay for this because this game is just so insane the story just it, it wasn't what I was expecting. At first, I was like, I don't know what this is going to be. Um, and it's like a, like a, almost like a 2D platforming uh, horror type, type game in a way. It's like super, it's super graphic, except it's not, it's not like the graphics are they're they're like 2D graphics they're using sprites and stuff so it's 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 graphic but it's not like overbearingly gra graphic you know but when things happen it's like you hear people scream you're attacking people there's like randomly blood will just split like i don't know kj 
I, I I don't really know how to put in words how excited I actually am to play this game after watching as much footage as I saw. It's a reverse horror game, and it's expected this summer, and it's expected on the Switch, so you'll be able to transition from Mario right into Carrion. <laughs> and, uh, but I just think it's really cool that you know, when you when you watch initially, you're watching those clips and you see like the soldiers shooting the guns and all that stuff, and, and they're they're going after that monster, they're trying to kill that monster. And then after you watch a little bit, you realize, wait a second, you are that monster that they're trying to get. And that's just really a, a nice, really cool uh twist that they that they have in that. And that monster looks freaky, man. And just like all the different mouths on him and everything. And, him going all around, um, it's, it's going to be a really good game. And I was, I've done, I've been looking a lot of the comments and a, and a lot of the fan feedback has been really cool too. There's a lot of people that just want to play this because they're trying something new. And that's what I like about indie games, you know, indie game development teams. They're, they're like, okay, how can we put a switch, put a spin on the genre? They're trying new concepts, trying new things, and, and it's not going to hurt your wallet too badly either. So I'm very much looking forward to carry on. Yeah, it's uh, the whole concept of it being reverse horror. It's it's one of those things where it's like, dang, how come, and forgive me if it's been done before, but how come it hasn't been done? Like, how have we not seen this like this before? You know, it seems like it would be just a, a simple concept of, Oh, you're just, you're the alien, you know? And I'm sure there's like, you could say like they've made an alien game or alien versus predator or whatever, but the, just the way this is done, you're an alien. It says you're an uh, amorphous creature of unknown origins, stalking and consuming those that imprison you. So it's almost like you're, you're the symbi symbiote or whatever, and you're, you're trapped in this lab, except you're like, you know what, I'm just going to, get myself out of this and destroy and eat and get larger as I do it. So, I mean, it looks like it's going to be really fun. There's like um, different upgrades for skills and stuff that you can, you can get as well. It's, I mean, this game, you know what, man, I hope this game does very, 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 very well. Cause I would love to see this game get a next gen rendition. If you know what Ooh, I mean, son. Just imagine, like imagine, like imagine this game, next gen, PS Five, Xbox Series X, Stadia. You're a giant freak. <laughs> 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 Oh man, I'm, I'm. We gotta make sure you're not getting any Google checks, KJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not yet. <laughs> but just imagine, like, just imagine if this had next gen graphics, and you're just roaming through a lab, and you're just grabbing people and just consuming people, sh tearing people apart. Like this game, I feel, I feel like this. Um, I feel like this could. Uh, I feel like this could go a long way. I, I definitely feel like this could, could go a long, long way. So so that's why we got to recognize. Everybody else got to recognize. Carrie. That is right. So uh, that's going to be a 2020 release. Everybody get prepared for that. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be on the Switch. Also, you'll be able to get it in the Steam store as well. Oh, look at that. So you can get it on Steam and it's can compatible with mac as well so i might actually have to i might have to do some gaming on my computer and just have a little fun with carry on on while i'm trying to edit or something one of these days um but yeah that's definitely going to be a dope game i can't wait to get my hands on that and it's only 20 bucks 20 bones 20 bones you can't go wrong with that so um you guys Check out some gameplay if you have not seen any on Carry On from Phobia Game Studios. It's going to be amazing. That's all I got to say about that, guys. Recognize. That's right. So uh, we're going to shift gears. We're going to brace ourselves for the Mission 3 hot seat. We are going to get right into that right after these messages. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, so we're back, and now it's time for the Mission 3 Hot Seat. So this week, I'm in the hot seat, so KJ, I'm going to let you go ahead and take it from here. Um, if you guys don't know, the Mission 3 Hot Seat is three rapid-fire questions. I don't know what the questions are going to be. I have to answer them honestly, and I have to answer them um, without real hesitation. Uh, but it has to be a, a real answer. I can't just say some some malarkey. So we're going to get into the Mission 3 hot seat. KJ, go ahead and take it, and I will do my best. Yeah, man. All right. Question number one. What would you do to improve Nintendo Switch Online? Um, d an actual voice chat um that's that's worth something um better servers more ser more servers um based off of region not just servers in north america and in japan maybe have some european servers as well um also i mean you're gonna have to fix the hardware too because the the drift with the joy con drift I mean, online, that I mean, that can ruin the experience as well. So the hardware also kind of need. I mean, and they've admitted that it's an issue and that they're working on it. So I mean, that would make it better as well. But other than that, I mean, with dedicated servers and a voice chat where I can actually talk to people that are around and I don't have to use some sort of app on my phone or something like that, then that would be sick. Other than that, I mean, it's not much different than any body else's online except for really the voice chat and the crappy servers but i mean it, you know, it is what it is and you can't necessarily blame it all well i guess you can because most of the nintendo games are by nintendo so yeah but that's what that's what i'll say fix some servers for the most part um fix the joy con um and that voice chat let's get like a dedicated like a real voice chat I feel like that joy con response is cheating because that is not pertaining to what I'm no, I'm, you good. You good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pull, pull a lawyer move. And yeah. the hardware, if it wasn't for the hardware. <laughs> <laughs> Name a game, okay? Name a game you could never beat. I could never beat Battletoads. Yeah. All of them, or what, just NES? Uh, dang, which for NES, or yeah, NES, NES. No, SNES. Freaking, oh my God, it's the level where you're on the freaking motorcycle, bro, and you have to jump over these, like, these, there's, like, these giant gaps, and there's just this one gap that I could never get past. Literally, years of my life. I've tried to play the game. Uh, a couple years ago, I was uh, a friend of mine has the game, and I was at her house, and we literally spent like three hours trying to beat the level, and then we just gave up on it. So, I, uh, Battletoads, Battletoads. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. It's all right. I'm sure that I'm sure the remade Battletoads is much easier. Yeah, just, it's gonna have to be since they're you know. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to throw too much shade on Microsoft. Next question. <laughs> no, you're just waiting for that conference. It's still happening. <laughs> it's, anyway. it's we'll, we'll, be talk, we'll be talking about that next week. Don't worry, guys. Should AAA games be shorter? Should AAA games be shorter? Yeah. Then they already are. KJ, is this a serious question? It's serious. No, AAA games should not be shorter. AAA games should be longer. Do you think that that would break the narrative of a story-driven game if it's super, super long and they're stretching the sales short? Hmm. At the expense of a longer game. It's like, a, it's like those uh, DC shows on the CW. You know, like some of them, they could really do good with a shortened season, but they extend it and they get you tired of the main villain before it's even well, done. Well, I mean, 
it depends because sometimes the seasons are really good. But then sometimes it's like, yo, why why haven't you beaten this guy yet? So, I mean, it depends. It all depends. It depends on the title, you know, and this is going to, this is going to kind of, kind of have something to do with the final topic as well, because it's like the games. So they want a set amount of money for these games. Right. So they're like, well, if they're only paying $60, we're only going to give you this, this many hours in the game. We can only allot this much time to put into the game because we're only making this much money on the game. Uh, I feel like AAA titles should be longer because they are the creme de la creme. They are the titles that are honestly getting people to buy these consoles. Um, and a lot of the time, those are the game AAA. Some, there's, there's people that are strict AAA only players, you know, and if they don't have a AAA title after they've beaten the first one that was only 35 to 40 hours, then what are they going to do? You know, some people just don't like indies, you know, some people are filthy casuals, you know, and can't find the joy in an indie game. So I feel like the game, AAA games should be longer because those are the games that are bringing people to buy these consoles. They should be used as a way to highlight the skills of these devs and, um, yeah, I feel like they should be longer because even like even Final Fantasy VII Remake, like the game is a decent amount of time. I thoroughly enjoy the game. There is replayability in the game, but part of me is still like you should have just remade the entire game, waited until the entire game was done, and then put the game out. But yeah, that, that, that cashola, yeah. that paper. So, I mean... I get why they're not longer, but they should be longer. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hope people are mad that I said that. Mm-hmm. I hope people are well, mad. I know I know my brother is probably like, what are you talking about? Do you know how much time it takes to actually make a make a game? Also, shameless plug, my brother is actually working on a game right now he's making oh, it. Nice. him and his yeah him and his girl are working on it they're making it from scratch so when we get more information and stuff like that we definitely will be talking about that here as well uh but i definitely know he'd be like dude what are you talking about you know how much time it takes to you know time and money and effort and energy it takes to do all this so um but yeah i still think they should be longer that's just me i'm not the one building it so i mean i can have opinions like that <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Just to be honest about it, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so how did I do? I feel like I did fine. I, I like think mine. you, I think uh, that first one, we could probably throw that one out. But uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, honestly, no, that was, you did good answers on all three. Uh, what I would add on to the should AAA games be shorter? I think it just depends on what type of genre it is. I think if you, like, for example, if The Witcher 3 was short, I think that would probably let a lot of people down uh, because of, you know, action RPG type deal. Mm -hmm. But I think that a game like Call of Duty is better served short. Mm -hmm. With that being said, Call of Duty, you beat that campaign. Whether I like the modes or not, they they have definitely got a lot of stuff you can do. Different right. game modes, team deathmatch, capture the flag, but they also have zombies and all this other stuff. So, I'm saying if, if it's a AAA game and you have a maybe a shortened campaign, please have a smorgasbord of modes that we can dive into. Mm. And so you would would you consider like NBA 2K a AAA title? That's a that's a triple A. Oh game, yeah. Right? Oh absolutely. So how do you feel about the like the story, like the the my career? thing in that do you feel like that's completely unnecessary do you feel like because part of me is like they could probably do without it completely and people would because before i mean you never it wasn't even in there no one ever even cared and then they added it but part of me also after playing it it kind of feels like 
you play like a you do like your rookie season and then after your rookie season it doesn't really matter anymore you know so part of me is like they could maybe maybe make that longer and it would probably feel better you know but also I, so i don't know it's it's one of those weird things where it is kind of based off of the type of game but i could see myself like I can see myself spending a lot of time in a, my career that actually is like revolved around my entire career, like in depthly around my entire career, opposed to kind of based around my, my, my rookie season. And then from there, it's like, you just have to get certain stats and then nothing really special happens. So, I mean, it's a it, nickname. It is... You can't, ch- you can't uh, change the <laughs> right. spark. Right. <laughs> What's up, the lightning freak? bug? I'm free. Like, <laughs> why is everybody calling me freak, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah. And you so. can't mess with his voice either. So you just, I'm sorry, man. Like some of the some of the acting in that is just just atrocious, man. And, and, and God. And and like I get it, and it's like, should it be should it be long? Should that be shorter? Should they just not even have that in there? Or should it should it be longer and better? It's one of those things where it is kind of like based off of the game, um, so it's hard to really say definit- definitively. But I don't know. I'm telling you, if they dropped it, it would be like Call of Duty Black Ops Four. They dropped campaign. There were some people that were like, "Oh, that sucks," but overall, did it really? It had really no effect on the sales for that game. So I think that that could be the same with NBA 2K. If they drop the career completely, which honestly, I'm okay with. Mm. I mean, the only reason you really even really do it is to make your my player better. So if there is a way you can make your, well, I I guess you could just play online and make your my player better. So yeah, yeah, they could probably just completely drop that. But that's, that's, that's a good question. What do you guys think? We want to know. Uh, answer all these Mission 3 hot, uh, hot seat questions, but we definitely want to know what you guys think about AAA titles. Should they be shorter? Should they be longer? Uh, do you think it's based off of the type of game? Hit us up in the comments below. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what you guys think, because uh, that's 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 a complicated one. So we'd love to hear what you guys think about that. So shifting gears a little bit now that I'm all – I've made it out of the hot seat and my pants aren't singed. Let's go ahead and uh, switch on over to to Sega. Sega keeps on, like, Sega's, they're trying to make some money. I don't know why Sega is dropping all these little micro projects, these little small consoles, uh, especially exclusively in Japan. But they're they're out here. They've announced that they're dropping the Sega Astro City Mini. Um, It's going to come with pre preloaded 36 games as of right now i believe they've announced 10 of the titles that are going to be on there um we're looking at alien syndrome alien storm nice. altered beast columns 2 dark edge fantasy zone golden axe which is a classic might i add i was playing golden axe at c2e2 on a big cabinet uh, I got some footage for that. Maybe I'll just throw that up on my like uh, Instagram or something so you guys can check that out. But Golden Axe is definitely a dope game. So you're going to get Golden Axe and Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. Uh, that puzzle- right there is a gem. And for whatever reason, Sega's just been really scared to, to re-release that. But that is such a good Golden Axe. You can make the argument that's the best one. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to have that on there. Puzzle in Action, Taint R, and uh, Virtual Fighter is on there, which is a banger. Virtual, virtual they, it's like they had to have that last, like Virtual Fighter's on there too. So you're going to get some uh, 3D poly fighting action on that thing as well. It's looking like it's going to be about 120 US dollars. It's going to be a Japan only release so far, but I imagine as long as that does well, um, they'll release it in the u.s as well um and i mean the thing about the the astro city is like the cabinet back in the day that was so popular that was in japan so this is like a japanese thing you know um so i i see why they're releasing it in japan only but you know how as gamers in in the u.s get down you drop a mini of anything and it has some games preloaded on it we're gonna buy that stuff so uh more titles will be announced as well. 
Um, it's going to run through HDMI. It's going to have micro switches for the, for the, uh, the buttons. Get that nice clicky sound too when you're yep. moving that joystick. Yep. So it's going to, uh, and from what they're saying and what I've seen, uh, what I've read, it seems like it's going to be exactly, it's going to feel just like the Astro City did back in the day on the big cabinet. So they really are like putting a lot behind this, really making it worth the 120 bones that you're going to pay for it. Uh, two slots for extra controllers, a micro USB slot to charge it. There's a headphone jack. Um, so with that headphone jack on there, you got the HDMI, you guys, there's going to be some Virtua Fighter streaming out there. I guarantee it. I definitely guarantee that. Um, and I like that you'll be able to play it on your TV too with the HDMI out. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's looking like the end of December 2020 um, is around the time we'll we'll probably be seeing that. But again, that's going to be in Japan. We're waiting on more information to see if they're going to launch this out in the U.S. anytime uh, soon after that. KJ, how do you feel overall about this? You think what, what's 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 up with Sega? Why are they dropping all these these little bangers? Like if you if you guys look up a photo of what this thing looks like, uh, the Astro City Mini, it looks it's a really dope small machine. Uh, it has the joystick and all of that stuff on there as well. So I mean, I think it looks cool. It's definitely something you want to have in the collection. What's your thoughts? Those Astro Cities, I've played the I've played the actual you know, normal sized Astro cities. And I just, I just like those cabinets overall. They're just built for lounging, just a more relaxed way of playing fighting games. Now, I don't know if they can completely transfer that feeling because uh, it's now so small, but uh, it, it looks very responsive. It looks, it looks really cool. I've already liked the 10 games that they announced. That, that's really cool. And the fact that Virtual Fighter, we're actually getting a port of Virtual Fighter. Uh, when the when has that happened? It's been a little while since we've had a port of Virtual Fighter. Now we've seen Virtual Fighter Two, the Genesis version. How many times has that been regurgitated for us? And every time, no gamer cares because we want the real, and the real is Virtual Fighter in 3D. That's how we want Virtual Fighter. So the fact that they're making this available is now opening the floodgates because. We have 26 more slots. There's got to be some more 3D games in the lineup. There has to be. And in my head, immediately, I love Die Hard Arcade. I don't know. Licensing might be tough nowadays, but Die Hard Arcade was just a fun 3D brawler. So I am interested to see what kind of games you, you all would like to see. I, we're not trying to put you guys on a lengthy poll of different questions, but I mean, this is hot right here. I just would like to know what games you would like to see on Astro City. Yeah. I mean, and I want to know what's up with Sega, dude, honestly, after like my whole pull from this, they can this keep thing, that micro. They, they can have that. They definitely <laughs> can keep the micro. Um, especially, I mean, this is, this is 120 for this. The micro was what? What is it again? Like a hundred for all four of them, or something? And it's not even as many games. No, that built. Game Gear Mini was a lot more than that. It well, was more oh, than that, I think. Okay, yeah, we're, we'll have to review review the tape on that. Honestly, after we talked about it, I was like, I'm never gonna buy that. So <laughs> I can't even see it, let alone buy it. You holding it's that thing? This thing, though, this thing looks pretty sick, uh, and it it made me think that about. Looks uh, it, it reminded me too. I was like, "Oh yeah, whatever happened to the Neo Geo too?" And I, I believe a couple of years ago they tried like a Neo Geo Mini too, but there were some issues with that. So hopefully there will be no issues with the uh, Sega Astro Sega Astro City Mini here, and we get some uh, some other cool titles that get announced for this as well. I mean, they 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 bust out some deep cuts with this already on this list, so I imagine there will be some uh, there will be some more bangers on there. So. Definitely, mm -hmm. as we get more updates on that, we will be covering more of the Sega, Sega why do I keep on saying Sega? Sega Astro City Mini. Uh, so I get one, bro. 120, that's not bad. It's not bad at all, man. And and just, I, I really want to play it. I want to see what the button's in there. I want to see the responsiveness. I want to see how it feels. Um, because, you know, it, mm -hmm. they kind of highlighted the micro switches. So it's one of those things, like, they're like, hey, we really are actually putting, you know, some engineering into this stuff. So I'm excited to see. I heard that's a big flaw of the Neo Geo 
uh, release that was similar to that. I heard mm -hmm. that that was like the big flaw is that it does not have that micro switch experience in there at all. That's why. Mm. I mean, in playing, especially like an arcade style game without having the micro switch, just imagine like flat buttons, you know, like, like, you know, like arcade buttons shouldn't feel like controller buttons, you know, arcade buttons should feel like arcade buttons. So, I mean, I, that would throw, that would throw me off and turn me off as well. Uh, so dang. Yeah. So shouts out to Sega for getting down with the micro switches. So let's uh, let's get into the main topic of the show, uh, you know, and this might get kind of controversial for some people out there. Maybe it may not. Um, but when it comes to money, things can get funny. You know what I'm talking about, KJ? So the big question this week, especially with the whole next gen thing going on right now. You ready to pay $70 for some games, KJ? Hell no. $70 standard editions? I'll let you go first, though, man, because I, I got a lot to say, and I just don't want to... I, I feel like you're going to have more joyful things to say, and I figure we'd get that out the way for us. <laughs> All right, so what I will say is... I mean, this probably should have happened a while ago, you know? Um, maybe, maybe not, you know? $70, 70 bones, 70 bucks, 70 smackaroos is kind of, I mean, let's be honest, that's pretty much 100 bucks. It's not $100, but that's $30 off is, is basically $100, you know? You got enough money left over after taxes to maybe get, a couple cheeseburgers or something who who knows you know um but if you look at the model that everybody's been using over the past five plus years with the microtransactions all of the blowback from the micro micro trans transactions the loot box systems the loot box systems being shut down because it's technically gambling all of these different tactics that these devs have been trying to develop to make money without increasing the price of the standard edition of a game. They've tried it. They have failed miserably. We'll, we'll just be honest. They have failed. Everything they really have tried has failed to the point where they're like, they have to develop games now that they're like, hey, we're going to give you free characters on this game, even though we still make a game that's going to charge you for characters that you see wrestling every single week anyways. <laughs> for a nice little call back there. Um, so I feel like, I mean, I feel like I don't want to pay this much for video games at all. I remember the time where you could buy video games that were 50 bucks, but, and I mean, I'm talking about big, big name titles. Like generally they were all around $50, but just doing a little research, I guess it was 2005 or so when the standardized pricing for games actually came in. Uh, Any time before then, games would vary in price anywhere on average between thirty and a hundred dollars for games. Uh, some some cartridges even being as rare as a hundred bucks. You know, um, you know, and that could have to do with developers. You know, games not being able to be printed as much and things like that, but games being valuable, so they having them having a higher price tag, things like that. We are just so accustomed to the standard pricing uh, because it's been so long for us. I mean, our entire adult lives, we've had the standard standard pricing for gaming. You know, so the entire time we've been buying games, they've been the set. 60 bucks pretty much um so now to have to cough up an extra ten dollars just because the generation is different of course it doesn't feel good um but could this be a positive thing it could potentially be a positive thing especially now that we see a lot of these companies trying to shift away from these models of um you know micro transactions and and things of that nature so um I don't want to do it, but I, I mean, I, I, I kind of get it 
you know, and based off of history in the past, at least we're not paying a hundred dollars. But if the games are 70 bucks, what are these ultimate editions about to be looking like? $120 for the ultimate edition, um, $30 season passes. What is, you know, what, what's this going to look like? So, I, I mean, that's, that's my quick little take on it. What do you think? If the games, you know, were $70 and that meant, okay, all the BS is off the table. But we know that's not the case. And that's why I got pissed off. When I saw that 2K, it was going to be $69. We know 2K. Do you think that it's dropping at $69.99? They're like, oh, all the VC coins are gone. <laughs> and everybody have a good day. We know that that's not the case. We know that VC coins, if, if, if anything, there's going to be even more stronger of a presence of VC coins as far as I'm concerned. So no, this is uh, this is not a good news, and I don't and I don't appreciate this. But again, it just adds to the fact that I like indie gaming, and it's just adding to that again that I'm just going to keep supporting indie games, and because they have been very affordable and well worth it. So carrying uh, stuff like that is what I'm really going to be looking forward to next generation, especially um, if I have to spend seventy dollars. It's going to definitely be a game that I that is well known to be good like the metacritic has to be very good for me and it has to a lot of people have had to have played it and told me hey man this this game is the real deal and then you know also games do go on sale y'all so you don't have to get i know we're in a generation where everything we have to have it right now we have to get it immediately hey man you know they do sales on amazon and and different places like that maybe just wait a few months uh i know we we always said you could wait on a game but that's looking more and more like the thing to do uh, because i don't see you said you see in microtransactions going away i would like that but i just i don't see them going away at all and i think i see them being even more even stronger than they've ever been with this new generation and so we got that We've got the sixty nine ninety nine going on, and I'm just thinking, if we were able to get rid of microtransactions or if they were able to dial them back significantly, mm. if season passes were gone or reduced in price significantly, something to balance this out. But I just don't see a balancing act. Do you remember when they first announced the fifty nine ninety nine price tag? And they were saying the reason was to cover manufacturer costs, right? And so they were suggesting, you know, go digital because you could save on that. Right. Do you, okay, if I go to, if I go by The Last of Us 2 right now, if I'm drunk and I'm like, hey, I'll go buy Last of Us 2. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, if I'm going to buy the, the hottest game, The Last of Us 2, and I'm in the PS store, how much is that game right now? Sixty dollars. If I go to not, GameStop, not, not to manufacture it, it's it's sixty dollars because that's how much the game costs. <laughs> right. Regardless if you go to GameStop or if you get it digitally. Right. So we were lied to then, and I just I I just can't see it changing. Like if mm -hmm. I was to buy two K sixty nine, if I was if I was to buy the newest 2K with Zion Williamson on the cover next gen. If I'm buying that online, is it going to be cheaper? No. No. So I want to hear the excuse this time. Is I guess that's what I'm I, getting at. And they have an entire, they're, literally the PS5 has an entire digital version of the PS5 that they're coming out with. And it still is not going to make a difference more than likely. Um, but this also, and this kind of like takes us back to the whole question about the AAA titles, about should they be shorter? I mean, if I'm paying $70 for this game, then it should be longer. I'm paying you more money, so I'm going to pay you more money and you're going to make the game shorter? No, I'm going to pay you more money and the game should be better. But, you know, one thing that I will say that may make this okay because yes, there are going to be those games that are going to be chock full of the microtransactions. 2K, you're never going to not be able to buy sneakers with actual money 
for digital sneakers in 2K. That'll oh, you can always get your fresh J's with your real money in 2K. It doesn't matter. You'll be able to do that. But with this next gen, it they have said that it has been said that there is going to be a big push back into the realm of single single player games, making these vast worlds and these giant single player experiences. So if that is the case, and we're getting these vast single player experiences where, well, we all know most single player games, there's not tons of microtransactions. Now there may be, there may be some microtransactions. Hey, you want a different, a different skin for your character or something that could be completely frivolous. Um, but for the most part, with these large single player experiences, there's not tons of microtransactions. So if we're looking at a big push for these single player experiences where we're not gonna need as many microtransactions, it may justify the increase of, in price. And that may be why they waited till right now to actually pull the trigger. Because in this current gen that we're in right now, there's no way that they could be like, we're going to make games $70. There's no, there's no way without giving us more stuff. And that's why we have these different, different editions where you have your standard edition, <clears throat> your digital, your, your definitive edition, and then your ultimate edition. You know, um, if they have this little bit of extra money, it may be able to tone that back a little bit where of course you'll probably still have your standard and your ultimate, but these mid tier packages and things like that, that they're trying to get off to with just miscellaneous stuff that doesn't really mean anything. We'll probably end up seeing a lot less of that and a lot more uh, being put into these vast games. Also, we have to take into consideration too, though. Yes, they're asking for more money, but the technology has increased. Artificial intelligence is way better to the point where they've even demonstrated um, with the Unreal Engine 5 and things like that, where they're able to populate so much stuff with artificial intelligence. I mean, how much time is it really going to populate, uh, you know, these, these vast worlds as well? So, I mean, there's going to be little nuances and checks and balances that they'll need. But it, this, is, this is a good topic. This is uh, something that a lot of time actually probably needs to be spent on. Um, and maybe, I mean, we should probably try to find some of that is not necessarily well yeah maybe an expert in in this in this realm to kind of get some information on this because there's so many things that kind of come into play especially with pricing and stuff like that as a consumer i hate to see it um but as someone that's you know trying to be reasonable and try to understand how why businesses may do certain things and not just assume that they're evil and money hungry and cash grabbing, which could, it could, you know, that could be it. But I, you know, I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt that, you know, it would help is if they, the reason. what would make things so much easier for everybody. If they said, look, we are throwing microtransactions in our game to keep it at a cool price of 59 99 or whatever it may be, you know, but just tell the people, say, look, we're just being honest. We have these microtransactions so that we can keep selling you the game at this rate. If if Microsoft did that, if Sony did that, Nintendo, God, I hope they don't get into that mess. But anyway, if if these companies start doing that and just, just being honest, just saying, look, this is what it is, I'd have a lot easier of time investing. But right now, it's just like, oh, yeah, 69 right now. Oh, yeah, you're fine with that. Absolutely. No. Nah. Mm. Let's 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 talk about it. Let's like you said. Let's get some experts in here. Let's talk about it. Explain to me. I'm already spending a lot of money on this system. It's not mm. going to be a free system. Buying a second controller is not going to be free because you know they're going to give you one controller. You got homeboys over. They can't play, so you got to get another controller. That's not going to be cheap. You going to have one game? No. You need to have more games. You got homeboys over. What y'all going to play one game all day? See, KJ, see, see, you're the type of person, and I feel like, you know, not to just say I'm the type of person, but I feel like I would be the type of person as well that would, th those ideas, you're not going to find people with necessarily those ideals in the boardrooms that are making these decisions. Because the people that are making these decisions, these decisions 
are they're, evil, like we they're said. Com- they're, they're, I mean, they're not necessarily evil. They're coming from more than likely like a sales background or a marketing background. They're not coming. They're not using it with the empathy of someone that's actually playing the game or someone that that wants to be open and honest and be like, hey, like we want to build a real relationship with you. The developers want to do that, but it's not the developer's job to to sell the game, you know. And that's where we're probably seeing a lot of the disconnect because what you say, what you said, is that's what you would think they would do but it doesn't happen. And the only reason why it doesn't happen, the only way I personally feel it makes sense is because the people in the boardroom that are coming out, making the final decisions, aren't those type of people. They're not the creative. They're not the people with the empathy. The people, people that are good at sales don't use empathy. You know, People that are all right in sales, that can make it work in sales, will have empathy. Like me, I've worked in sales, I've, I've done good, the best I've ever done is when I threw empathy out the window. For me personally, I can't do that with my life every single day to survive. You know what I'm saying? Some people are built that way, and those are the people that make it into these boardrooms. It's completely unfortunate. It probably shouldn't work that way. But when you're dealing with corporations and people that have invested money and bottom lines and all, things get super messy. So, you know. It's unfortunate that the gaming industry is an industry, you know, because that's how you end up with $70 games and shorter AAA titles. <laughs> they evil, man. <laughs> hey, I, w- I will not say that they're not, but I also, all right, I just won't say that they're not. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think seventy bucks is too much? Like I said, I feel like it's kind of a complicated issue, but I also don't want to pay seventy dollars for a game. So, uh, and KJ, I mean, you heard what the man says. He, they're they're using dark forces to make these decisions, and I mean, I feel like they might be too, uh, honestly. But who really knows? Let us know what you guys think. Are you ready to pay seventy dollars for these games? Is it going to be worth it? Do you think the vast uh, single player experience is going to make paying an additional $10 plus whatever the, you know, the difference in tax is going to be worth it? Let us know. Hit us up. We definitely want to hear from you guys. Uh, Tonight's show was great. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had some great topics to talk about. Next week's show is going to be amazing as well. We're going to get into the Xbox showcase as well as a bunch of other stuff. So you're going to want to stay tuned to the Play Legit podcast. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, the Play Legit network on youtube hit that little bell so you get notifications whenever our episodes are uploaded or new content is on the channel check out playlegit.net because that's the home that's the hub that's where you're going to find everything related to gaming and real talk every single day every single week we're going to have content up there for you guys so check that out there's original articles reviews the show as well play legit originals it's all up there check the site out also follow us on social media play legit across the board instagram twitter all of that good stuff find, find that. us on on facebook we got a facebook page all that stuff you could also follow uh-huh. me at Corey elijah across the board anywhere uh you can find me Corey k-o-e-r-r-i you know how it's spelled uh easy super easy to find me so hit us up let us know what you guys think about the show any topics that you guys want us to talk about tweet at us hit us up let us know what you want to hear because we definitely are always open to your guys' feedback. You guys have been doing great, uh, you know, sharing stuff, subscribing. Keep it up, guys. We definitely appreciate every single person that tunes into the show. KJ, before we get out of here, man, what do you got for the people? I'm going to let you know right now, game developers, game publishers, y'all better toughen up. Because if all these games are going to be $69, we are coming for you. And if we don't like what we're seeing, we're going to be extra vocal about it because you're charging extra money. Extra money means extra fists. You did. <laughs> That's right. We're coming. We coming. And also, extra money means extra real on these reviews. Now, we keep it real. 
but we gonna we might with that extra money we're gonna have to be extra real you know we don't have to be so, extra real on these reviews so stop my mind and give them the five in the past might only get a four Ooh. you see what i'm you, that's what i'm saying so y'all better come on with it Come on with it. And dude. I don't want to hear nobody on Twitter that's making these things. Well, you guys are just unfair. No, y'all shouldn't have been charged the seventy dollars. We coming, man. This is play legit, man. <laughs> I ain't, I'm just getting started. Gaming, good night, though. Gaming and real talk. You heard it first, uh, KJ. Man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 that's the dude, so much, so much heat came from KJ's microphone. He somehow went through and knocked over my skate. It's crazy. It's crazy. Things are intense. Make sure you guys subscribe. We will catch you next week for another episode of the Play Legit Podcast. Keep it real. Keep it legit. And we out. Peace.